David Ortiz, uh, who's got a lot of uh, amazing dynamic changes for diets. Uh, what we were talking about last week was was how we can make diets better for us and make them fun. Today, our focus is is focusing on specializations and choicing and and option changing of our foods so that it makes it easy for us to kind of see. So substitutions is the topic today of foods, specifically with a flair of of, uh, of, of Lizette Ortiz. Uh, so we're going to kind of take a look at that. So uh, Lizette, tell us a little bit about what you're going to do today, because we're going to talk about a little bit about nutrition and food substitutions, because I know that you got a lot of knowledge and a lot of insights. So we want to be able to present that information for people to kind of get it and to enjoy different options. So take it away. You got it. Tell us a little bit about substitutions. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for having me again. Oh, absolutely. Super fun. Here and Kenna, by the way, she's over there on the yes. other side. So if you want to see Kenna, she's where she is. She's, there's Kenna. You got her. Okay. She's doing <laughs> Keep on going. amazing with the controlling of everything. Yes. We got a little dynamic here. <laughs> yeah, ahead. we do. Um, so basically, uh, like we talked about last time, um, a lot of what I like to tell my clients if they want weight loss, if they just want to live a little healthier, feel better, is kind of decide what you want to include in your diet and what you don't. When we include a lot, way too much of a lot of different things, it usually doesn't work out very well. Mm -hmm. So it's good to know what to cut back on and how to, more importantly, which what we're talking about today is how to be able to still enjoy your favorite foods, your favorite flavors, but without those added calories from extra fat, extra grains, extra carbs, simple carbs that aren't really needed. Mm -hmm. And especially, I believe that locally here in El Paso, the Mexican diet is very, very obviously popular. And, and we're just, a lot of us are raised on that, you know? So to suddenly one day be like, well, no more tortillas for you, no more chilaquiles, no more tacos. It's like, well, that's my identity. Like, what, yeah, what it's just not realistic. Yeah, no, it's not realistic. Yeah, it's not realistic. Yeah, and it's not, um, it's not easy to keep that lifestyle. It's not sustainable when your culture is part of it. It's like when I was living in Japan, for example, um, try to tell a Japanese person or a Korean person or an Asian person in general, all right, so no more rice for you. And it's like, well, no, their diet, it's a staple of their diet. And it's mm -hmm. like with Mexican people, it's the same. It's like, oh, okay, so no more beans and no more tortillas for you. It's like, well, <laughs> no, that's not going to work out. Um, so what, we, what I would like to talk about mostly today is um, some of my favorite substitutions that I've made so that I can continue to enjoy Mexican food because I do love Japanese food and Italian food, but... Mexican food is my favorite. But this is going to be with a healthy flair, right? So healthy we're gonna, flair. A healthy yes. flair. We're going to make it really good for yes. us, and we're going to yes. make sure yes. that that we make our families happy, our families healthy. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about this, this this presentation today. So we got a lot of pictures that are real cool. So let's get it on. Cool, cool. All right. So uh, let's start with our Prezi, our first one. Um, this is one of my favorite go-tos, um, not only because it has a Mexican flavor, to it but because it's a one pan meal or a one mm. bowl meal one yes. dish meal <laughs> i love those they're the best especially if you don't have the time you don't like cooking these are the fastest dishes you can you can ever make um it's really really easy um we have a few pictures here in the first one you'll see we have basically the ingredients which for this i used uh the chopped for chili like pork in in chunks um, which is usually what is used for chile verde. So nor normally, this would be like the substitute of a chile verde, you know, pork and chile verde, which is green chili sauce. And it's normally what made with just pork and potatoes. Where did and you learn how to do this it. particular plate? Has, uh, tell me a little bit about the history of this plate. This looks good. <laughs> this is my this is my my thing. This, this is, is my thing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I came up with it. Oh, oh, this, oh this is yours. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Ortiz <laughs> chilaquil. <laughs> this is uh, yeah, this is the Ortiz uh, salsa verde, a uh, pork and salsa verde. Basically, what's Alfonso think about this? He loves it. He likes he loves it. Alfonso huh? loves it. Yes, yes. Alfonso, yes. I like the name Alfonso. <laughs> Yeah, if you know me or you know Fonzie in El Paso, uh, that's probably my husband. Because uh, he <laughs> knows awesome. a lot of people here and everyone knows him as Fonzie. So, uh, yeah, baby, if you're listening, we're talking about you. We're going to talk about <laughs> hey, We're going we're to get some uh, insight into what you get fed. <laughs> okay. Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, he loves it. He really likes these. Um, luckily, good. He's really easy, too. He's not like... Oh, I don't like this. I don't like to eat that. Don't make me this. Don't make me that. He's not like that. He's not picky, and he 
luckily just, reasonable yeah you know <laughs> reasonable <laughs> and, and he goes with the flow with everything including my choices of uh my main menu, menu items <laughs> so <laughs> luckily so like i said the original salsa verde stew is usually made with just pork and potatoes and salsa verde and that's it you usually accompany it with tortillas um so instead of that i added some more nutrients and more fiber and more just vegetable portions by just chopping up some extra things so instead of only having the three ingredients meats potato and salsa i also added some chayote which is that green squash looking thing that you see next to the red potato chayote chayote yes that is a squash it's a type of squash it comes in spiny varieties and like that one that doesn't have the the thorns um, when the weather's harsh, the skin tends to be thick, so you might want to peel it. Okay. Um, when it's the weather's nice. Any or techniques not, on peeling it? Just like a carrot, Got or it. potato. Okay, just just peel it. it. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. And and you don't even have to. I don't like the extra fibrous skin, so I do it sometimes. I I gauge it when you cut it. You'll know if the skin's too thick. <laughs> you'll know if you want to. You'll know if you want to uh, um, skin it or not. Um, so that's also a good substitution if you just want to skip the potatoes altogether. I would substitute with the chayote, okay? Uh, because it has a similar texture. It's nice. It stays firm. It stays in nice little squares. It keeps its shape, um, and so it gives you that feeling, and both visually and um, in like your texture. You, you know, yeah. when, when yeah. I first saw the picture, it looked like a like a green apple. It looked like a green apple to me initially. You know, so, it's a similar color. Yeah. Mm-hmm, okay. Awesome. Yeah, but it's it's so good. Have you ever had? No, no, before? no. Never in no, any presentation. No, not, no I haven't. No. <laughs> so good. Look, okay, is it, does everybody. It taste like jicama or no? Or no, diff- no. Okay, it's different. It's even better. It's juicier than jicama. Okay. So it's not gonna have like a, a a starchy texture to it. It's more like a juicy. Ah, it's really good. You should you should no, try we're gonna, it. Like, we're I don't gonna, even, I'm even. Hey, we're gonna do a podcast on that. Yeah, let's, let's <laughs> just <laughs> all about chayotes. Uh, but yeah, that's really good. And so another thing that kind of also gives you a similar semi-starchy texture is our carrots. So also cut those in chunks, kind of cut everything in about the same size. Um, and so just with your chayotes and your carrots, you've already added so many more vegetables than the dish would originally have. Right. And then on top, those are my go-tos usually. And then on top of that, I put whatever else I have, which this time I had kale. So I just, I cut all the hard parts, like the stems and the thick veins. Mm -hmm. I cut those out and I only use the ruffles, only the leaves, chop that up. Um, and then some mushrooms because mushrooms are delicious and green onions because I had a lot of those. Otherwise, I would have used the regular white onions. No, this is, this. I, I, now, I see that the, the, the plate, as you were before it was prepped, it looks pretty dense with mushrooms. You, you use more than three mushrooms, right? No, I think those are the that potatoes. That was it? Okay. Well, oh, okay. Oh, those little ones? There? Oh, or you know what? It's the uh, meat. Okay, oh, gotcha. so once you start cooking, oh, and then the salsa verde, you see the little container yes, and yes, the ingredient. I yes. made that. I make that. Talk I, to like, me. That's Talk to me. What, 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 okay, look, okay. I know you're going <laughs> to, look, this is important because there's a lot of people there that they're losing their husbands because they don't cook. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But you got to give them a special, you know, go-to thing here. So how did that, how'd you make that? That salsa, I actually have the recipe for that salsa in a video. In oh, my, if you okay. go to my website, we'll, we'll link well, it. Well, why don't we'll you, link what, it. What's, the web, what's the website again? The website is a little long, but it's easy to remember. It's DIY, like do it yourself, mm-hmm. right? DIY mind body upgrade, one word. Excellent. DIY mind body upgrade. And then there'll be links for recipes and, and video recipes and things. And I have my recipe for the salsa verde. It's really easy. You either grill, I, I like grilling it. So in a pan or a griddle or wherever you want, you put your green tomatoes, the tomatillos yes. in Spanish mm-hmm. or green tomatoes, grill those, grill some onions, garlic. I always put garlic in mine and your choice of chili. Normally people will use jalapenos for it, but I don't love jalapenos. I can have them, but they're not mm-hmm. my favorite. So I use chili poblano instead because it has mm. a deeper, smokier flavor. So I roast those and then you basically just blend everything together and that's it and you can add water if you want it to be lighter you can just leave it nice and thick it's up to really it's really easy. Kenna, do you do this kind of stuff for your husband not this tasty no (laughs) i'm picking up some tips right now what do you think he'll (laughs) say if you show up and you make a a plate like that oh gosh he would probably love it because he loves like (laughs) spicy food things that we always joke around that i was raised in a house that Use salt and pepper, so <laughs> there's not there's not a lot of flavor. No, your mom did so, better than that. <laughs> maybe maybe some Italian seasoning every oh, once yeah. in a while. 
yeah. but he'll he would probably love this so yeah? this is good yes try it and let me know how i will Please try this it. is it okay so this is the for the the salsa verde so basically you saute all your your harder uh, vegetables all your starches so your chayote potato carrots with some onions saute that in no more than one teaspoon of oil so you keep the oil low right? is, that, is that a wok it's not. It's just a big pan. Okay, got it. Got, got, <laughs> it's got a it. big. But if you had a wok, that would be really cool too. Got yeah, it. or just a big, just a big pan that you can just saute it in. Mm -hmm. um, that'll work. And then once your your um, meat. Oh, lies. Okay, no. You put the onion and the meats first. Let the meat cook a little bit, and then add your thick starches, which is the second picture you'll see there, where it has potatoes and carrots and the chayotes <clears throat> all together. Okay, so you want to brown. Yeah, you want to brown, brown your first, meat. brown your meat a okay. little bit, mm -hmm. and then toss um, all the starches and the, the bigger and chunks. And does that meat. just help them not get as soggy, like keep up with the potato texture almost? Or Yeah, not putting them in all together, it just doesn't mm -hmm. cook them as long. Okay. Because it's also, at least for this dish, it's pork, so you do want it to cook thoroughly, mm -hmm. you know? It's very important that it cooks thoroughly. But also, because I like the browning, that it gives you know like the texture and the flavor of the mm -hmm. meat when yes. you let it brown a little bit first it kind of like sears it i guess you know like mini seared chunks mm -hmm. in, in a way and then you add the other things so that they start cooking you just cook them until they're soft and then i added the kale at the end because it's leaves so kale and mushrooms go at the end because they cook really fast and then once it looks like the starches and potatoes and things are getting to the right texture, then you add in your salsa verde and then just cover it, simmer it for at least five to ten minutes, and mm -hmm. you're done. It's uh, really fast. That's an amazing plate. This is really, really good. Anyway, do you um, prep the meat at all the night before or anything? Do you give it any sort of like seasoning or anything? Mm, no. No? But if you did that, it would be even better. What do you recommend <laughs> doing with it? Um, I season. I mean, I do season. Okay, so all of this, you would just throw whatever seasonings mm -hmm. uh, to taste. I do add a lot of things. <laughs> uh, I add garlic powder on top of the actual garlic that is in there. But I add garlic powder. Sometimes I'll have a seasoning salt mm -hmm. uh, a little bit. But if when I use meat, I like using uh, the English sauce, the Worcestershire sauce. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. I really mm -hmm. like, like, I think my my cuisine's flavor mm -hmm. involves that a lot. And I cumin. It. I love using cumin, garlic powder, and uh, Worcestershire sauce are basically my go-tos. Okay, how okay. a plate like this, for example, cumin. Uh, that's uh, you can you can make a disaster, and you could <laughs> make, make the whole house smell like cumin. How much <laughs> cumin would you use on a plate like this, like, on this whole design, like a tablespoon or a teaspoon? I don't measure things, but I have it in a in a shaker, so just <laughs> like psh, psh, two shakes, uh, two, two shakes. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that guy. Yeah, basically. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the meat. All right, that's so. funny. <laughs> uh, so that's one. Please go ahead and try it. You can use any vegetables. Again, it doesn't have to be these vegetables. You could mm -hmm. use broccoli. I've used broccoli before because that's what I had. I always have carrots, so there's always carrots in it. Um, and you can use any other vegetables. You could have used spinach instead of the uh, kale. You can use cauliflower. You can That'll use any, like any vegetable. Very lean, want. very lean. So the, the Ortiz exactly. chilaquiles. <laughs> yeah. I like and that. Is, so, sorry, this too. Yeah. How many portions do you usually get? Out of this, like, could it feed a family of four? Do you have <laughs> leftovers, or well, maybe not so good, but um, this is supposed to be for two people. Two I know people? it looks okay. like a lot, but we only eat like one meal and mm -hmm. then one smaller snack meal. So we need to get most of our proteins and vegetables in one in one yes. big meal. So that's Got why it. this is pretty big. If you're accompanying this with like a soup or a salad or something like that, this could be for maybe three or four people. But if this is your only meal, because there's enough, if you see how many vegetables, it's like a carrot mm -hmm. per person, half a uh, potato per person, half a toyota per person. That's already several cups of vegetables per person. Yes. And so that's just one meal. Um, so this would be for two people if that's your only thing. But you can also accompany it with other things. So you okay, can get, yeah. And that's about a pound of meat. We usually eat uh, half a pound of protein each okay. in our meal. And that gives Let us Let me ask you, uh, particularly in terms of choosing how much to eat and, and everything, 
let's say you do a leg day or versus a, just an aerobic day. Oh, do you ch yeah. do you change it up in terms of, you know, hey, Alfonso, you did legs today, so you get a little <laughs> extra piece of meat or something. Or, or or you did aerobics and you get no meat or something. How, how does that work? That is so funny that you say that because, yes, that is exactly. Like, I don't think he he doesn't know that. But, yeah, that, <laughs> like, he does now if he's listening. He knows now. That's uh, funny. But, yeah, I do actually take that into account how much I exercised, how much he exercised, what we did if we remember to take our protein after mm -hmm. our workout mm -hmm. um what are we gonna eat later what snacks we have for later if it's something that's high in protein or not you know like i'll take a lot of those things into account so yeah sometimes it's like if i if i worked out but he slacked it then it's like mm, mm. we're gonna get like the same or i'm gonna get a little more <laughs> <laughs> but no he's a guy he's bigger so he needs more so it'll probably be more even if we both worked out then he usually gets a little more protein yeah. or more whatever carb like potato in this case or something because his body just functions better with carbs mine functions better with fats so okay. Okay, i let yeah. him have more you know that's so right. cool because i think that you know the family knows their their spouse and it knows what does you know what is good and in this situation it's so important to be able to pick out the the amplitude of the proteins and the amplitude of the carbohydrates versus the fibers so this is very good important i mean and and, and a very i think it's one of those basic questions that as you get advanced into nutrition, you really know how to gauge. Mm -hmm. And and I think the world is now saying, you know what, we don't have to eat meat every day or high proteins, specifically on the days that we work out hard, but then not on the days we don't. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool. So we got another we got another plates coming up. What other plates we got? Yes. yes. Okay. So now it's chilaquiles. I'm gonna ask you one question yes, first. Um everyone thinks that eating healthy is really hard and it's really expensive. This looks very budget friendly. Yeah. Is it budget friendly when you purchase all these ingredients? It's actually very budget friendly. We were talking about this last week yes. and Dr. J proposed like to save money. Like if you just saved money by mm -hmm. doing it, right? Uh, just like I can't spend any more money on this. So no snacks. There's no money for snacks. And truly, I spend so much less money when I eat clean than mm -hmm. when I eat other crap. You know, mm -hmm. like right. when I fill up, like rice is cheaper, but where's my nutrition, you know? Right. Yeah. And and that's bland. You're still going to want something else. So you're going to end up eating junk anyway. And junk is actually pretty expensive. Yeah. This is really cheap. Like my husband and I, it's just the two of us, but we eat like this or you'll see other pictures. We do eat healthy snacks. We buy and, and we spend maybe $150 every two weeks. But it's all just healthy, healthy. stuff. Did you like hear that, stuff. Trudy? Did you hear that, Trudy? 150 <laughs> bucks. Did you hear that? 150 bucks every two weeks. Now, we can do that. Now, there's another thing I noticed about this is that you cut these these vegetables up, and there was a lot of fiber, obviously, in this yeah. thing. We're not just feeding, you know, Alfonso in his, in his muscles. We're feeding his bacteria. Yeah. And, and what mm -hmm. I love Very about important. this thing is the the the... I mean, you can almost see the probiotics having a hallelujah uh, song going on. You can hear the thumps. Of the uh, They're happy. All the fiber's coming in, yeah. and they're going to enjoy this. Um, you mentioned a couple of things like rice, okay, uh, and versus high-fiber foods like this. Rice is absorbed in the first five feet of the intestine once it leaves. Literally, it ends up injecting into your body so quickly. Really no food for the bacteria. So right. this is where we kind of look at it and we kind of say, this is a food that's not only good for your body, but it's good for your bugs. Yeah. And your bugs keep your whole horm hormone system together. Everything working right. Right. Yeah. You know what? And, and you, know, and I, you know, I hate to say it, but we talk about this because we're older. And did you poop in the morning? And did you, you feel know? good? Did you know? It makes exactly. a difference, right? Exactly. So if we do, we, we make it happen. Let's go to the next place and not talk about those kind of things. <laughs> okay. okay, let's go. Back to yummy things. Um, okay, so another delicious, delicious dish, Mexican dish that I love, especially for breakfast. I recently went to uh, Guanajuato with my mom and my aunt and my cousin, and I swear every morning I had chilaquiles for breakfast because every hotel had them, and I love them, and they're mm -hmm. so good. However, the bad thing about chilaquiles is that you usually fry the tortillas that are used for it. Mm, and so that it. already sabotages your entire plan for your <laughs> the diet. Whole day. <laughs> yeah, for the whole day, exactly. And then the eggs are usually fried eggs too, you know? So, but there's no reason for that to be the case. You can still enjoy your chilaquiles. Um, it, these are honestly very small changes that I made um, is instead of frying the tortillas, Cut them up and bake them. I put them in the oven at about 350 for 
about 15 minutes, but that's here in El Paso with our altitude and our everything. So you check, you know, check on them yeah. <laughs> until they're crispy <laughs> and golden. I wouldn't recommend putting them at any higher temperature than 350 because that would probably just be too much. Uh, it would They would burn. And then the salsa is, again, my salsa that I make. <laughs> That's the same salsa? That's the same salsa. Oh, cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I make sure we put a go-to. link yeah. to the salsa. To the <laughs> I will. I will. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll go add a link in there. Um, but yeah, that's my salsa that I make. I make it all the time. I buy the green tomatoes. Every time I go to the grocery store, I buy my green tomatoes. And there's always like a batch of salsa at home. And then so what I did for this is I sauteed some onions and then no lice. I just baked the chips and then I threw them in the pan. <clears throat> and then the salsa, like I mentioned, already has garlic and it has onion and it has uh, the, the chili in it. So that's already a lot of flavor. So you don't need to add oil. You don't need to add any garlic, any onions, anything. That's it. And so just pour it on top of the the chips and kind of move it around until they start softening a little bit. Once it starts simmering, you leave it there, cover it, make sure it's nice and hot. And then I just crack the eggs on top of that, <clears throat> as you can see there, and then cover it. Oh, spread just some salt and pepper on top, some green onions, cover it for a little bit longer till the eggs are cooked to your liking. Those look like six eggs or seven eggs? It's uh, six, six eggs. Six eggs, yes. okay. Okay. Yes, they're a little uneven. I know there should be a seventh one in the middle, right? No, no, it's Which good. Which <laughs> probably, but I guess Fonzie didn't work out that day, so he didn't deserve the fourth <laughs> egg. That's probably it's, what happened. He gets half a huevo. That's funny. <laughs> he only got three that day. Actually, yeah, he prefers four eggs. He does prefer four eggs. That's so funny. But he must have slacked it this day because I obviously only gave us three each. Uh, so we both slacked it, I guess. Uh, and so that's it. And you just cover it once the eggs are nice and cooked how you want them. Uh, I took with a scoop. I scoop it out with a, either a spoon or a spatula or however you want. Normally the salsa is nice and thick. If it's too soupy, then use a spoon. But I like it either way. And just serve it. And then you see in the final picture, uh, of course, a side of salad, right? And it's kind of like a chilaquiles are a type of thing that you can have for breakfast or you can have as a breakfast for lunch, breakfast for dinner type meal. Um, so I really like them because of that i like that breakfast for dinner that is so cool because sometimes i want to have breakfast for dinner exactly yeah. that is so cool wow yeah. that's amazing so that one's easy that was really easy it's just the salsa and i mean if you don't want to make the salsa you can just buy it like they sell salsa verde at the store and mm-hmm. and salsas are amazing like we were talking about last mm-hmm. time even as dressing substitutes because they don't have any oils in them salsas are made by roasting or boiling steaming some sort mm-hmm. of vegetable and blending them together say that so, again they're made by how either roasting? roasting vegetables or boiling or i don't I, I i sometimes steam them but for the most part it's boiled or grilled vegetables and just blended that's basically what a good real salsa should be there mm-hmm. shouldn't be any oil in it any grease any anything so salsas are super safe so just go to the store buy yourself a big salsa verde and bake your own chips and then just do the same thing. You don't have to make your own salsa. You can always just look for something, look at the ingredients. It should only be vegetables, maybe some salt, right. and a couple of not so terrible preservatives, you know, like mm-hmm. if they need to be in there. Uh, but other than that, it's it's a really simple meal that um, the other thing that you will notice, and I'm sure some people are like, hey, where's the, donde está el queso? Where's the cheese, right? <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, that's, that's another thing we're modifying here is we're not putting cheese, so we're cutting back on that fat. But, if you want the cheese because it's part of it and you must must have it, there's nothing wrong with grating, you know, a little bit, an ounce of cheese and spreading it all over. An ounce of cheese divided by two people, that'd be nothing. Nothing. Even one ounce per person, it's like maybe a hundred and something calories. It's good fats, you know, but it's it's a little. You're not going to dump half a pound of mozzarella on mm-hmm. top of these eggs. There's no reason for it. So that's, that's my second go-to favorite um, item that I like to make. What's the next one here? Okay, so after this, <clears throat> I wanted to mention some other dishes that I've enjoyed making that might be enjoyable for some of our listeners. Um, how about, did we talk about the popsicles last time that I made these delicious popsicles? No, no, no we but didn't. You should, it's getting really hot out, <laughs> yeah, so that would yes. be a really oh good one. I am obsessed with popsicles right now, you guys. <laughs> I have 10 pineapple popsicles in the freezer, and I just made 10 cucumber chili so these are actually the um, in a popsicles folder, the middle one. Uh, oh, okay. there, yeah. Oh, right. And I'm Sorry. Like you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so basically, in in all my local, my uh, paisanos here will will know what I'm talking about. Is uh, in Mexico we have you know paletas like popsicles. We have popsicles everywhere in the world, but our Mexican paletas usually have some very unique flavors, right? And so one of my favorites is the cucumber and chili lime. Mm-hmm. So pepino con chile uh, popsicles. And I remember when I was growing up in Mexico, I remember I, that was my go-to. It was my favorite. And they're delicious. It's basically cucumber and lime and a lot of sugar. <laughs> got it, <laughs> you know? got it. And so that kind of ruins the whole thing. So, so it's like, oh, popsicles are good, but they have a lot of sugar. So what do you use for instead of sugar? So instead of sugar, I use the monk fruit sweetener, which we were also talking about yes, last week. Yes, and so one thing that I'm doing this summer is I'm making my own uh, cucumber and chili lime popsicles. Really easy. Wow. One cucumber, two limes, um, monk fruit sweetener, chili powder, blend it, done. Popsicle. Pour it into the mold, put the stick in, done. Enjoy it. And uh, it's really easy. They're really easy to make and they're really quick. If you want to add more flavor to them, you could use the tajin powder. I don't know if you've seen okay. it. You've seen yes. it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can add some tajin powder that has real sugar in it, but it's very, very little. So, you, I mean, you wouldn't add more than like a tablespoon for an entire batch Lizette, you mentioned something about monk fruit, right? So, tell us a little bit about monk fruit and what your experience is with monk fruit uh, sugar. What is that about? It's it's great. So it's it's made from monk fruit. <laughs> okay. Um, but it's basically so far it's a sweetener that they extract from this fruit, and it's been used as a sweetener for apparently thousands of years by people. And where it's from, I forget where it's from. I want to say it's from Asia, mm. somewhere. So for these popsicles, how long do you freeze them for? That's a good question. You Mm -hmm. know why? Because uh, when I first made some popsicles, I gave them two hours and I tried to pull them out and the stick came out by itself. (laughs) I was like, well, I guess that wasn't enough. But those weren't the cucumber ones. Okay. Um, I think those were creamier. Creamier stuff takes longer. With the water ones, I would say four hours. Just to be safe. Mm -hmm. Just to be safe, I would say at least freeze them for four hours. Okay. So uh, is is just what I would say. Um, Besides that... Uh, that one's really good, the the cucumber ones. And then, uh, oh, monk fruit sweetener. Yes, I like yes. it a lot because it's sweeter than sugar. Okay. Not by a lot. Um, I like to use it at even, like whatever, one tablespoon of sugar, I'll substitute for one tablespoon of monk fruit sweetener. But things usually end up being a little extra sweet. So maybe mm-hmm. I would go like half or almost one to one, but not quite. But it doesn't have a bitter aftertaste. It has um, a very nice, sweet, natural taste to it, honestly, I think. And it does, yeah, it just, the lack of aftertaste makes a big difference mm-hmm. to me. And where do you buy it? Um, I get mine at Sprouts, but I'm sure other health food stores have it. Uh, there's also, actually, Sprouts has it by the pound, where you can oh. just like grab a bunch <laughs> of it and like buy a pound of it at a time, which is what I did last time. But there's also a brand called Lacanto, and they make little packets, and they make different types, like white sugar or brown sugar flavor. Or when I mean, they don't flavor it, it's just the way that they extract it is a little different, so it has a little more caramel flavor or or not. Um, so that works out pretty well. Um, I especially like just the plain regular white one, mm-hmm. I think, because it's the most similar to sugar. I like sweets. <laughs> Let me ask you this, and, and when you when you um, when you work with your 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 clients, how is it that you kind of in, in when we're looking at these particular substitutions, how do you adapt to an individual and assist them in creating a diet that's right for them? Like you can say, do you look at them and say, you know, this is kind of an apple shaped body, a slender body, and how do you tailor that? Uh, yeah, that's actually a really good question. And and you do you can go by body type a lot of the times because usually that kind of lets you know what kind of, uh, well, body type people yeah. have. And so <laughs> what foods work better for them, what kind of exercises, how much activity and everything. But it, over our lives, we can change our bodies. So, mm-hmm. for example, someone who is normally like tall, skinny type, right, Um 
if they don't take care of themselves, they can change their body over the years for it to become a more rounded body type. Mm -hmm. And so now they're going to have to do things that a naturally rounded body type will have to do to lose weight or get back into their skinny all the time shape. Mm -hmm. However, people who usually struggle to gain weight uh, will do better with carbs. At least it's something that has been, you know, uh, notice because they burn a lot they also have a hard time putting on muscle because they just burn through all this so fast that it's just like they need the carbs for fuel but someone for example like i'm in okay shape right now but i tend to gain weight really easily like really 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 mm-hmm. easily and so if i were to eat tortillas every day like if i were to eat every day uh, tortillas and rice and beans and like steak like regular mexican meals every day and like uh, huevos for breakfast and then like you know tortillas and guisados for lunch and then like some other thing for dinner i i i couldn't like my body just does not respond well for mm-hmm, carbs mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so for example a person in, in that case i would tell them all right well for your body type uh we'll have to get rid of these carbs we'll have to get rid of grains we'll have to get rid of tortillas reduce them at least if we don't get rid of them completely at least reduce them um if you're going to do tacos do just two tortillas instead of four eat the rest with either lettuce wraps or just by itself you know Mm -hmm. like i've i've eaten my fair share of open-faced burritos you know like i've gotten a burrito and it's like all right Mm -hmm. thank you and just open it and eat the insides with a fork and you're eating the delicious stuff inside and then the bread's just kind of extra Mm -hmm. so yeah i do base it on that and most importantly though i ask them do you tend to gain weight easily do you like these foods do you like those foods do you struggle to this and so that will also help me decide yeah right what to to suggest so let me ask you um when we look at your um your 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 portfolio of diets and how do you help the your clients specifically retune their diet diets and what i mean by that is is that uh you know your husband for example Mm -hmm. fonzie and you 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 know that if he eats a certain food he just packs it on you know yourself Mm -hmm. how do you work and gauge how do you tell a person what to look for in terms of the things that make them swollen and just get kind of chunky uh and, and how do you help them adapt uh, you mentioned something about the use of a diary, and you mm-hmm. mentioned something like that. Tell me, how do you do that? Um, the first thing I like to do is start with a semi-elimination diet. Okay. You know, where it's like, all right, we're starting, jump start. You're going to get rid of all of these foods, and we really go really, really, mm-hmm. really strict. And it's like none of these, not even any potatoes, not even anything that could irritate you, like any nightshade family foods like uh, tomatoes, eggplants, potatoes, all those things. Uh, no grains. We ha- I have them like that for like at least a week and then slowly add one food at a time okay. and see how they feel. And then we can really gauge what is really causing inflammation, what's causing bloating, what's causing headaches even sometimes. What do they report to you in terms of inflammation that things aren't sitting right? Let's say they eat a, a certain food and, and, and it just keeps on, whether it's milk or, or certain byproducts, dairy byproducts. What is it that we can help them to, to zone in on if it works or not in terms of elimination diet? Um, it really, it, it depends. Like, it really depends on what they feel, I guess, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, but what I mostly hear is people are used to inflammation. Is yeah. that, tell me about that. What do you mean by inflammation? You know? and, 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 and Kenna, tell me what it is that the patients tell us when, 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 we, when they say, I, from bloated, so I just feel puffy yeah. to I just feel, you know, inflammation. What is it that they should look for that tips them off that inflammation is or they ate the wrong thing? And that's that's the thing is like so many people are used to inflammation. And I'm sure you understand what I'm saying, because a lot of people don't even realize that they're bloated until they're at the end of this first week. And they're like, my stomach feels so much smaller. My this feels so much better. I didn't realize. But. I don't feel this discomfort that they didn't, people don't even realize that they have Mm -hmm. a discomfort until it goes away. Right. And so something that I would say, pay attention to, I would just do it once a, once a, once a year, at least every six months, I would like to do a detox. So like take at least three, four days at least of super clean eating, no grains, no anything that'll irritate you. And then slowly add foods and see how you feel. Mm -hmm. Just listening to your body is so important. 
Yeah. Like you really need to, like you said, like I know my body, mm -hmm. I know my husband's body and it's just, I can't know every client's body, but I mean, there are patterns that you mm -hmm. can notice, but in yourself, just kind of know what feels right. What feels wrong. If you feel like when you stopped eating something, your stomach's smaller, you don't feel uh, nauseous or bloated or pain mm -hmm. or discomfort, then now you know, you know what, you probably shouldn't be eating that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've said before, a lot of people associate inflammation with like just joint pain or an, a physical thing they can see. They don't think about their intestines and how they're eating and what it contributes to their headaches. Or like you yeah. said, your nausea or your bloating, you don't realize that um, even like using the restroom could be so mm -hmm. easy and simple because the foods that you're eating are really causing inflammation in there and just wreaking havoc on all, all the insides because we can't see it. Exactly. So definitely detoxing is great to do. Like you said, once every six months, just to give your body that clean reset so you know and also you can the food sensitivities you have can also change yes. so doing it every six months or a year it will really help you just get better Age in it. tune with your body which is a great thing you should re you should really know your body it'll help you so much and it'll help you with the foods <laughs> that you can have and even with the substitutions it's yeah. just a great thing to do do you have clients who say like, no, I'm not going to detox or they don't understand the purpose of it. Or how do you get around things with your clients that maybe might be a little tricky or have you had not had to come in mm. contact with that? No, I haven't so far, not necessarily because most of my clients that I've had, at least maybe I've just gotten lucky. <laughs> uh, they're very like, they're ready. Let's do yeah. it. whatever it is. Let's do it. In fact, most people are surprised. Uh, you know what? Now that you mention it, I'm thinking about it. Most people don't eat enough, like mm. especially with women. Mm -hmm. um, yes. We tend to think, oh, well, the less I eat, the more I'm going to lose weight, right? And it's like, well, no, because now you're starving yourself. <laughs> so now you're storing everything. And so, no, when I actually tell people, it's like, you're not eating enough. You need to add this many more vegetables, this many meats. It's like, what? No. Like, well, how yeah. am I going to eat all this food? I bet that I'm could like, be, hard, be <laughs> hard for them too. like almost yeah. a, a mental thing they yes, they just like, automatically no, think I if i eat more i'll gain weight but it's not my mom she, sorry mom she was we one of those people i know oh my <laughs> um she thought you know eating less means less calories so it's better for you and she, she was just eating saltine crackers with butter on them they're and so freaking good I, they are really good <laughs> until my uncle came over and was like oh you're just eating crackers and my mom said oh i'm trying to lose weight and eat less and he was like oh you're my... just eating flour oh like, my god you're you know literally what? filling uh, your body uh, the gluten people are just exploding right there yeah. so yeah when we look at uh at, at this area here right here we were talking about you had mentioned a little earlier about having popsicles, right? Yes. yes. And what well, we're looking at the popsicles right <laughs> oh, now, yeah. we can actually see it on one of the monitors there. Uh, is that Alfonso? That's Fonzie. Alf yeah. Fonzie's led, led, he's enjoying that. that. <laughs> what type of popsicle is it? How did you make those? So that's the cucumber. The, oh, those are okay. the cucumber okay, chili popsicles that I made. Um, so you can see that there are like chunks of cucumber. So when I blend, I didn't actually use a blender. I used a food processor instead. So okay. I could just like press it a couple of times so that there are still chunks of cucumber. Because okay. the great thing about the Mexican popsicles, the traditional way they make them, is they're usually chunks of fruit or yes. whatever the mm -hmm. popsicle is. So I love that. <laughs> and so I made sure to keep some chunks of uh, cucumber in there. And Can you go through it and teach us how to, how did you make this? I mean, tell us how, yeah, what it is. Actually, what is, okay, there's another picture here. Can I go to the next one? I next guess? one, I think I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to see how it happens there. And yeah. there, oh, okay. there you so go. Those okay. are the ingredients. So you have one cucumber, two limes. I put like one tablespoon of tahini, which is in the back. The container with the red lid is uh, just chili powder, just regular okay. Mexican chili powder. And then that Lacanto monk fruit sweetener, golden, is the one that's supposed to be kind of like brown sugar. Okay, so um, you like the golden. I like the regular one. one. I like or, the regular okay. one, right? I just happened to have that. It was the end oh, of the okay. bag. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's one variety that they have. But any, any monk fruit sweetener will work for that. Um, just no sugar. And so if you can see there, like that whole cucumber alone has, what, 35 calories maybe? Yeah, yeah maybe. Maybe. 
Um, so if you put all of that and divide it between the 10 popsicles, that means each one of those delicious, decadently sweet, and amazing popsicles. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's how it. How many calories? Like nothing. five? Nothing. Yeah. Like nothing. I can eat all of these and still be fine. Yeah. Well, I don't know about the chili and the lime in my stuff. I, mean, no, I, don't, I don't know that that's a good idea to eat 10 all at once. We're, we're, we're about so. compromise here. Compromise. Yeah. Yeah. We're working fine. our way towards... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, so if you like it, like I love those popsicles, but when they're loaded with sugar, it's just not a viable snack for me in the summer. Mm -hmm. But if I'm making them myself and they're lean and, and they're adding water and vegetables to my diet and vitamin C from those limes, then why the heck not? You yeah. Know? Like, so just make your own popsicles, people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about what made you, uh, what other types of, of popsicles do you, that you do do? Okay, so uh, I just made some. They're not super low sugar because I took the lazy route um, for several reasons that I'll explain. But I made some pineapple popsicles, and I made them with... I say that I made them the lazy way because I bought the concentrate <laughs> and the pineapple concentrate. Okay. And I just, like, added water. So it has sugar. It's like the regular just fruit juice. But it's pasteurized because I, like uh, Kenna was saying, your food sensitivities change mm -hmm. uh throughout life and i have become sensitive to pineapple oh so i, I used to too. not be it's I, a bummer it sucks <laughs> it's yeah. really a bummer and so but you can still eat it if it's cooked uh, mm -hmm. because it, it it's, destroys the enzymes that right. are causing problems. And so um, if it's pasteurized, it's basically cooked, right? So the <laughs> juices, any juices or canned pineapples and things are okay. So I bought that, and I just didn't want to deal with it, and I, I used that for my popsicles. But if you have natural pineapple, chunks of pineapple, blend it with some water, fill up your little containers, popsicle containers, you got your panetas right there. Lizette, I don't want to take over this whole thing, but I kind of bumped into your page and I found a bunch of different cool things yeah, on here. Yeah, you know here. what? How well, come? How, how about you pick? You, you pick you, a picture. You know what? I I, I did, and, and what I found is that I have a favorite in a moment. I'll show it to you. Okay. Okay. And and I'm gonna surprise you because I think that everybody oh <laughs> in the world has this as as one of their specialties. Like, you know, yes. uh, to me, there isn't uh, a week that should not have a taco night, right? Taco night. Yeah, <laughs> so, taco Tuesday. Yeah, take a look at that. And when you see that on, on there, you can see uh, that looks really good. Tell me about, about this, because that's got a lot of, you know, cruciferous vegetables on there. And to mount it, tell us. Yes, there's always a lot going on in my salads. There are always at least, <laughs> at least seven ingredients in my salads. Um, okay, so this one has, you know, your basic uh, le lettuce. I don't use iceberg because it just doesn't have a lot of nutritional value. Mm -hmm. So I usually stick to something greener, either a green leaf or a red leaf, which is what's on there. Also, uh, like Dr. J noted, uh, broccoli, mm -hmm. right? Cruciferous vegetables. We got some broccoli in there. I cut it small. Someone once told me that it was hardcore to eat broccoli raw. So <laughs> I guess, I guess uh, if you don't like it raw, steam it before you throw it in there. <laughs> I think it's perfectly You fun. know what? I don't look at it just for me. I look at it for my bugs. I got to make exactly. my bugs happy. My exactly. bugs have to be fed. They don't, they don't want meat. They want some crunchy stuff, yes. and they want to yes. break it down. Yeah. Yes. So there are mushrooms, I think, in there. Yes, tomatoes. And then uh, basically the vegetables are vegetables, and I just toss them with a little bit of lime and salt, and that's oh, okay. it to give them flavor. Yum. And then the meat is just uh, lean. I think it was like 90 90 10 or 95 10 lean beef you can use 85 and then just drain the extra fat if you want um and then basically just the meat has um onions garlic uh, celery and then your beef mm, red celery. bell peppers celery and red bell peppers will give your taco salad all the flavor in the world celery yeah. i would have never celery. never thought to put that in taco really? stuff yeah that's so good. good. Yeah, That's now I can is. see exactly. I, yeah, I've never thought of celery. I mean, in, in, in a taco. I mean, that, but you know, celery makes a big difference. Exactly, and that's what gives foods flavor. This is why eating healthy doesn't have to be boring, you guys. Like, this mm -hmm. is super lean. It's super healthy, but it's very yeah. flavorful because that meat has garlic, it has onion, it has celery, it has cilantro, it has cumin in it, salt and pepper. It has a bunch of things in it. Like, mm -hmm. why would you even need a dressing? on that yeah if I don't you know. already have that you know we look at this plate over here what's this one about this one oh it that is. looks like <laughs> oriental is that oriental it's not oh, well, okay. there, is, there is an oriental <laughs> dish in there oh well, maybe what is, what is this tell me tell me a little bit about bit. this place because that looks good it, it might does. be a little bit Hold 
Oh, no, I know what it is. Okay. Uh, this is a vegan day. This is a vegan day meal. So, okay. Um, so first, can you yes. tell us um, more about your schedule with eating when you say yes. vegan day? Vegan just day. kind of explain that a little bit more. And taco day. Yeah. And taco, taco day. day. Right. Yeah. yeah. So go ahead and explain that Substitutions. first. Substitutions. <laughs> yes. So uh, variety is the spice of life, right? Right. As we all know. And so... Um, good diet is a very diet although you are going to notice a lot of ingredients repeat in my diet but at the same time i have a lot of different ingredients all the time mm -hmm. uh that said i like to rotate what i eat depending on what i've done like we were talking about mm -hmm. if we didn't work out or anything mm -hmm. it's like oh well, you know what we don't need like a steak today right um or we've been eating a lot of fish and chicken and things so it's like okay vegan day we always have one vegan day a week usually yeah at least uh, or at least a vegetarian day where we'll eat some, maybe some products, like maybe eggs, like right. uh, okay. uh, avo lacto vegetarian. Um, but usually we do meatless day at least once a week. Once or twice a week we go meatless completely just mm -hmm. for variety and to also for our, for our little bacteria, you know, like for our little microbes. They, they yeah. need the variety. They love, they love the veggies. They love the fiber and stuff like that. Uh, so I do, we do chicken, fish, pork, beef, uh, and vegan or vegetarian and a variety. Just skip it every day. <laughs> <laughs> um, when, yeah. when we look at this plate, we, here's another substitution that you have here. Um, and that's a really unique one. What's this one about? Yeah, that so looks like a dessert. This yeah. does look delicious. like a dessert and it tastes <laughs> like a dessert, but is what I suggest to my clients who are used to eating, for example, oatmeal every morning. Okay. And when we're trying to get rid of those grains, at least for the first portion of their of their program, um, I lived on this every morning for years. I am not I, I get bored easily with mm -hmm. food. OK, and I am not one to eat the same thing every day, but I can eat this every day and not get tired of it. It's basically Greek yogurt with your choice of fruit, really. But strawberries are always good. Mm -hmm. Any sort of berries and then uh, some crushed almonds. And I put a little bit of honey. Just raw honey, less than a tablespoon. Just I was okay. flavoring okay. the agave. I was kind of was like looking at it. I was like, I was like, this guy needs a little agave on there. <laughs> I do honey. I don't honey. know. I'm good. huge good. on the agave. Oh, it's okay. It's believe good. it or not. Well, even just the crushed almonds is great because so many people go for the granola that yes. you can just get. Yes. And it's full of sugar exactly. and they don't realize that. So exactly. Just even by making your own granola or by just using, like you said, crushed yeah. almonds is so much better for you. That's how I started. And it keeps you full. Exactly. That's mm -hmm. how I started because I used to do fruit and yogurt with granola until uh -huh. I found that granola is not healthy, you guys. It's not healthy. Yeah. Stop oh, eating it. Wow, I it's loaded with sugar and things. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, can we show the wings? Oh, yes. Hold on. Hold on. Ooh, ooh, oh, oh wait, wait. No, we can talk about that one yes, first. That, yeah, this yeah. one looks, you know what? That looks so different that... I want to know what that's about. Yes. Okay. So this is basically Taco Taco Tuesday again. We taco do, Tuesday. We do do Taco Tuesday. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So uh, again, tacos, usually a lot of times I'll fry the tortillas. Clearly, I don't. I warm them up on the fire. Uh, the inside is fish. So they're fish tacos. A lot of places, mm. I don't know if it's just California or if they do it here. I've, I had never seen it until I went to California. But they fry, they bread and fry the fish before putting it in the tortilla for whatever reason. <laughs> <laughs> which don't do that okay yeah. don't don't do that um but so what i do instead is i just again celery onion garlic okay in a pan with just a, a touch of oil if you need it if you have a non-stick pan you won't even need it and then just throw the fish in there until it breaks up it's nice and cooked it has a flavor you put your seasonings and then that's it you serve it with your four fire warmed up tortillas not fried tortillas there's hardly any oil in there there's no fat in there uh, and then the cactus on the side, the side dish is yes. a nopalitos or cactus side dish. This one is warm. So this one's also saute the onions and then your cactus until they get that, that pretty color, like mm -hmm. a nice bright green. And then after that, you can add the cilantro and the tomatoes since they cook a little faster. And that's it. You just cook them until they're nice and bright and they have a good texture that you like, which could be anything. You could eat them raw if you wanted or, you know, if you want them al dente or nice and soft, you can do that too. Um, so there you do have carbs, but it's only the four tortillas. If we talk about calories, it's only 200, but corn is a whole grain. So mm -hmm. if this is your meal for the day and you, there's no reason why this is not healthy for you. It's you know, um, as I was looking through your diets, um, I was I was trying to think. This is those plates that you've shared with us. 
they're very very nice um what do you do in like lifestyle like the, now you've prepared the food uh what do you do in towards of presentation and, and how do you set it up for dinner so that you can relax and enjoy it because that's part of also yes. this, the experience of eating because mm -hmm. not only is eating we're running 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 but what you do is you prepare a, a place to eat obviously mm -hmm at the dining room, but how do you set up the, the environment for that? Because we got some more plates here, but I want to also talk about like when you sit down, because that looks like I would have eaten that plate way before it hit the table. Okay? <laughs> and I, it's just like I would have just done it. So how do you kind of control yourself to make sure that you have the experience? The experience. Um, well, the, the best recommendation for eating, like you're saying, is being mindful of what you're eating and mm -hmm. like sitting next to or in front of your your you know your family your person and talking and observing your food and chewing carefully i'm gonna be completely a hundred percent honest with you guys we always watch something when we're eating so i'm always okay. watching tv not tv tv i mean it's on the tv but who watches tv anymore right? okay. everything okay. is streaming right so we're but watching together. Yeah, yes okay. either anime or or some tv show that we're following or something and so we always just sit down we set our little spot we play our show and we eat and it's just i mean it's, it's part a ritual of our it's cool ritual. it's it's exactly. a cool ritual yeah. i see another plate here that is just a, so amazing I, I don't even know what it is it's got a lot going on okay so this one was my response to a breakfast dish with no bread because when you think breakfast you think eggs and toast and bacon right eggs right. and bacon there has to be toast eggs and bacon there has to be uh, something else so if you see here there's eggs and well there are eggs there are eggs under the bacon and then there's the bacon which was grilled or i mean cooked and then um patted to take the excess oil off mm -hmm. chopped up but that is served on top of sauteed vegetables and the vegetables are a mix of i think that one's just cabbage and squash uh, the mexican squash and a little bit of celery i always had that for flavor mm -hmm. Um, and there are, I believe this one had a little bit of potatoes. Yeah. I see little bits of potato in there. You can always skip the potatoes. Again, if you're really limiting your starches, uh, or if you just don't do well with potatoes, you can, uh, replace them with more veggies. Um, I've also made this with broccoli instead, uh, or sweet potatoes Ooh. instead of the regular potatoes. That's, That's the really magical good. stuff. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So you can sweet make this potato. exact dish, but instead of all the vegetables that are on, at the bottom, I would slice two sweet potatoes flat and put them on top of that. What and is this called? Really good. We need a name for it. <laughs> well, well, next time. <laughs> Something, geez, I don't know, but it's good. Healthy eggs and bacon. Uh, okay, there you How go. About? Healthy eggs and bacon. That looks <laughs> amazing. I mean, I love the way that looks. Uh, we're gonna go over one more here. Okay. Uh, let's see what we got here. Yeah, let's pick see what something the, good. Let's see what the computer gives us. Okay. Oh, oh this is a good one. Yeah. This is a good one. This is a good one. Okay. Ooh, <laughs> nice. All right. So I love pizza because who doesn't love right. pizza? Right. Yes. Pizza's delicious. Oh, good. I'm glad this came up because we were talking about it earlier. Um, so another food that I was raised on as as a kid um, was homemade pizza my mom actually used to make pizza like oh, wow. uh, my mom's family is originally so from italy so we have mm -hmm. like a family pizza dough recipe and so she used to make it and it was it was freaking delicious but then when i found out about nutrition it's like oh this is just flour <laughs> and lard like literal lard because of the area of italy that my family's from they use lard instead of olive oil what part is that from it's I, the south Oh, it's you just know the what? South. There's some Italian people being real upset right now. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we need, sorry, we need some city to. <laughs> it's I, and I only know that the rock, because... <laughs> the, boot? the boot, the heel. <laughs> Which part? It's between north and south. I worked at an Italian restaurant for a while in LA, and that's the only reason I know because talking to one of these uh, Italian ladies. Uh, we were talking about our family's pizza recipes, mm. and she's like, oh, your family uses lard. They must be from the south of Italy. No, the north of Italy, because the south uses olive oil, and the north uses lard. Yes. I was like, oh, I didn't know that, so now <laughs> I know. Um, but anyway, so uh, I love pizza, but flour is terrible, especially the <laughs> white flour that you use to make pizza, right? And so I make, you know, like pizza toast. That's another quick way of making pizza. But again, toast, usually white bread, terrible process. Mm -hmm. So instead, I use uh, eggplant. You can make an eggplant oh. pizza. Eggplant, I know. <laughs> I'm a genius. I'm a genius. No, I'm not a genius. Uh, there are already recipes. Liz Ortiz, the genius. <laughs> We're going to make sure we can index that. Liz Ortiz, the, the genius. Genius. <laughs> genius. Like,
like a wily e. coyote i'm gonna have to bring my little card that says that, genius. we need it we need a cartoon now and we need a cartoon <laughs> the genius, genius. <laughs> the cooking genius Got it. so uh you can make a pizza and ken and i were talking about it before and you mm. can get your eggplant and make it into a crust and bake it and then it's it's too long i don't want to spend that much time so i just cut my eggplants in slices grill them you know either on a big pan or a griddle and then while that's happening i make my pizza sauce which i honestly make with canned tomato sauce i just get something that doesn't have a lot of additives in it mm -hmm. uh, something that's just tomato and salt and then um i make my sauce add oregano to it basil garlic of course and then once the eggplants are ready, they're grilled on both sides. I put the sauce, whatever toppings, cheese, cover them or how, or maybe bake them for five minutes or whatever you need to do just to melt the cheese a little bit. Mm -hmm. Again, if you see, if you look at this picture, these are uh, Hawaiian, but I don't do okay. ham for Hawaiian. <laughs> I do bacon for Hawaiian. So I got some nitrate free, uh, thick, thick cut bacon, which is mostly meat and less fat. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and then some pineapples. Since I, they're cooked, I can eat them. <laughs> so I chopped them up, put that on top, and then grill them. And uh, you, these we were able to eat by hand because I baked them a little longer, so they dried out. But sometimes you you might have to eat them with a fork, but it still tastes like pizza, and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then all you would have to do, because, I mean, the eggplant is a vegetable, so you already have a lot of vegetables there. But you can also just put a little salad uh, on the side, which is always a nice addition to anything. Wow, Lizette, yeah. I would like to tell you that we have learned a whole lot today regarding your, your yeah. specific meals. Um, right. Let me ask you, in, in terms of, of, of you creating these ultimate designs when you did all this, um, you, you mentioned the n nutritional components. Before I go into that, I want to ask you specifically when you mentioned something of the nitrates. What did you mean by that in the nitrates avoid the meats with nitrates? Oh, okay. So, well, to cure... Mm. Okay, technically, they still have nitrates even mm -hmm. when you, they say they're nitrate-free. They just don't use the same ones. Nitrates okay. are basically added to foods to cure them. So mm -hmm. just, you know, to keep them fresh, especially hams, um, cold cuts, deli meats. They usually have to add these these uh, <clears throat> minerals. I guess mm -hmm. nitrates are like uh, they're minerals that they are added in there. But it's too much sodium. So for especially, especially for people with like heart conditions, they, they need to stay away from nitrates. Yes. So especially for them, I, I like to stay away just because it's extra stuff that I you don't need. You so know, like, you look at the ingredients and you'll be able to I see. I look at the ingredients. Yeah. yeah, you can see. And a lot of the packages will say nitrate-free, no nitrates. Okay. So just look for that. Wow. And if you read the ingredients, they'll say nitric, da, 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 da. So if it doesn't say that, you're good. They usually, you can just cure meats with salt and vinegar, really. Mm -hmm. So you don't really need yeah. all that other stuff. Wow, is that we have gone through a whole lot of things today. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, one of the things that we've noticed today is that uh, in, in the process of, of, of teaching us this nutritional dynamics, uh, first of all, I want to thank you, okay? Oh, because this is you. only like, we only had like four plates. And I know people are watching. I can see the numbers of people watching and the comments that they're, they're loving the, the foods. So one of the things is, is that we want you to come back and, and, and share with us some more stuff and different topics. So uh, I look forward to it. Uh, today's yeah. been a real exciting thing for us. I know Ken has got some ideas for her <laughs> husband. Uh, I love them. <laughs> yeah, I got to tell you something on a side note. Um, you know, my mom, she's uh, she's an older Colombian lady, uh, and she'll look at square at 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 at, 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 a, at the young ladies of today and say, you know what, you want to keep her, your man happy, you better learn some <laughs> skills. And you may be all educated, you're a lawyer, you know, career oriented, but you need to have some skills, and right, uh, because I got to tell you, um, the way to a lot of people's heart is their bellies, and if you take mm -hmm. care of them. And you make sure that they don't have atherosclerotic disease in the future. Uh, the way you're you're tending to your family, the way that most moms and most families tend to their families are, are are so. It's critical to be able to assess and dynamically change. So our topic today was was substitutions. Mm -hmm. So we need to be able to adapt. Of and you've given us some amazing topics. So I, I don't know what we're going to call you, but we're going to call you the genie, <laughs> the magician, the, the the kitchen magician for the the substitution magician. Substitution guru. Yeah. <laughs> substitution <laughs> guru, go. right? Because I'll tell you what. One of the things is that as we look at this stuff, uh, we want to bring El Paso. Uh, 
the the knowledge that you have because they're going to love this stuff and they're going to be able mm -hmm. to reach out for you. So once again, tell us the website to find it so we can find it. It's D. Was yes, yes. Um, well, yeah. thank you. I hope I hope people get a lot of ideas from this. Like even if definitely, even if you don't do exactly what I talked about, like if it gives you ideas for, oh, I'm gonna try this with this other thing. Like please do. Um, you can find my website where you'll find recipes and pictures and everything for all these things. Uh, my tips: uh, DIY Mind Body Upgrade dot com. One word. Or you can follow me, uh, and this shows up at some point later in yes. the video, uh, <laughs> yeah. is at coach underscore Lizette uh, on Instagram. And I share a lot of my recipes and my workouts and tips on there. I too. saw your Instagram page. It's amazing. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So follow, even if you follow there, there's a link to my website on the Instagram. So just oh, follow at coach underscore, uh, uh, underscore Lizette, and you can get a link to everything. Everything's linked there. So awesome. if you just follow me on Instagram, you can get access to all these. And ask me questions, like if you have any questions or uh, if anyone has any ideas for, you know what, I really love this and I know it's terrible for me. What's an idea for a substitution? I would love to. And Brainstorm. it's a challenge, too, yeah. you know, yeah, like I yeah, take yeah. it as a challenge and it's fun for me to come up with healthy versions of things. So let me know. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, Kenna Levon, I want to end with you a little bit here. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you learned on this whole process here today. Well, I've, like we talked about, I've done the eggplant pizza before too. I think that it's delicious because I love pizza. It's a downfall. Um, so the eggplant <laughs> one is definitely great. And my one-year-old also unfortunately loves pizza. So it's definitely good to have substitutions, especially as a mom, just ready in your back pocket and ones that don't take forever because the last thing I want is a very hungry toddler. Um, but the celery, I have not thought about putting celery in a lot of our dishes and I love crunchy food. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely something I will be giving a try. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell yes. you what, yeah. and what I loved about this particular setup was that you were very considerate in terms of, uh, our bugs. Uh, I'm a big mm -hmm. one about the bugs. I got to, and the fiber and all the good, the pro and the pre and the postbiotics, uh, to make our bodies healthy and to work like it should. Uh, I want to thank you again, guys, and uh, we look forward to the next uh, uh, rendition. Uh, we sometimes get a little kind of crazy clinical, but today we decided to bring it home because it is the answer from the mm -hmm. kitchen to your genes. And, and when you have the power of cooking food that affects your family's genetics uh, through epigenetics changes and the changes that we get into clinical in this process, uh, you really make a difference in your future generation. So yeah. for, for it's not so obvious, but... For those that uh, know that we influence our future generations by what we eat. So uh, goodwill and God bless. And uh, again, we're coming to you from the Push Fitness Center and uh, looking forward to the next connection. Bye, guys.